Now in part A of the question, we have four positive charges that are arranged at the corners of a square and we have to figure out the magnitude of the electric field at that location, at the center of the square. We have marked the charges Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. And the first thing we wanna do is draw in the four electric fields that are produced by each of the four charges. For example, let's start with the charge marked Q1. What we do is we go to the location of interest, which again is the center of the square, and we place a positive test charge there. And we ask ourselves, okay, if I put a positive test charge there, in what direction, either towards the positive charge or away from the positive charge, would that test charge be pushed? And we all know that opposite charges repel one another. So this positive test charge would be repelled by the charge marked Q1 because Q1 itself is positive. Therefore, the electric field would point away from Q1. So we could label that field E1. And that would complete the direction for E1. The next thing we do is move over to Q2 and we repeat the process. We imagine that we place a positive test charge there. We ask ourselves, would it be pulled towards Q2 or pushed away from it? Well, Q2 is positive, so it would be pushed away from it. And therefore, the electric field E2 would be pointing in this direction. We continue on with Q3. If I put a positive test charge in the middle, it's going to be repelled by Q3, so the electric field would be pointing away from Q3. Finally, on to Q4, same story, it will be repelled. So we're gonna direct an electric field vector away from Q4. Now, what is interesting in this case is that all of the charges are the same magnitude. We know that because the question says so. We also know that the distance from each charge to the center is the same for each of the four charges because they're located at the four corners of a square. So what we're trying to say here is that the magnitude of all four of these electric fields would be the same, and therefore this electric field, E4, would cancel out with the electric field E2 because they are in exact opposition to one another and they have the same magnitude. Same story for E3 and E1, they too would cancel. So in fact, all the electric field vectors cancel and the overall electric field in the center of the square, in a very boring sense, is just zero. So the net electric field is going to equal zero newtons per coulomb. That would be the correct answer for part A. Now part B, of course, is much more challenging because although three of the charges are positive, one of them is going to be negative. So let's take a look at that. Now we have arbitrarily replaced the charge in the upper right corner with the negative charge. It turns out that the analysis would work no matter where you place the negative charge. It might just be easiest to keep it in the upper right as we may see as we progress. So you can put it anywhere you want, but we're gonna put it in the upper right corner. Now, what we've done is we have kept the electric fields E1, E3, and E4 the same because those three charges, Q1, Q3, and Q4, are the same. The only change was to Q2. So let's figure out the direction of the electric field now from Q2. Same story, we put the positive test charge in the center, but notice the positive test charge would be attracted to the charge uh, indicated Q2 because it's negatively charged. So in this case, we're going to put E2 pointing towards that charge in the upper right corner. So that's an important distinction between parts A and B. Now, studying this diagram carefully, we can see once again E1 and E3, because they have the same magnitude and are in exact opposition to one another, they'll actually cancel out. So to simplify our lives a little bit here, we can actually eliminate E3 and E1 from our picture, and therefore you don't even need to include them in the picture at the corners of the square either. So it all comes down to E2 and E4. Now, to understand how to proceed, let's set up a little chart. It's a simple little chart. We're just going to have a column for the charge, a column for the distance to that charge, and then a column for the electric field. So for example, let's start out with the charge marked Q2. What we need to figure out is the distance from Q2 to the center of the square. Let's take a more careful look at that square. Now the question indicated that the length of each side of the square was two centimeters. What we seek, again, is the distance from the center to this corner right here. To understand that distance, we'll just draw a diagonal from one corner to the other. 
Now note this is a right angle, and therefore you have a right triangle, but it's a special type of right triangle, it's an isosceles right triangle. It's isosceles because two of the sides are equivalent. Now it turns out that the hypotenuse of an isosceles right triangle would be the length of one side of the square, which is two centimeters in this case, multiplied by the square root of two. That always works for an isosceles right triangle. You just take the length of one side of the square and multiply it by radical two, easily derivable from the Pythagorean theorem. So two radical two centimeters would be the length of that entire hypotenuse. However, we only want the length from the center to this corner. So basically we want half of that length. So you take two radical two and you divide it by two to get half of it. And when you do that, these twos just cancel out and that leaves you with radical two centimeters. So that's going to be the distance that we need. The only difficulty is that is in centimeters. So we have to multiply that by 10 to the negative two. That's gonna get it in meters. Now for the electric field, we're going to be using the electric field equation for a point charge. Now we all know from this chapter that the electric field of a point charge is the Coulomb's constant multiplied by the magnitude of the charge divided by the distance squared. So what we would do is we would take K sub E, multiply that by the magnitude of the charge to so the magnitude of Q2, and then we'll divide this by the square root of two times 10 to the negative two meters, and then don't forget to square that. So that takes care of the electric field from Q2. Let's look at the electric field from Q4. Now, again, we need the distance from Q4 to the center of the square, that's gonna be the same distance. It's just gonna be half of that diagonal. So luckily we can actually come in here and just do the same thing. It's gonna be radical two times 10 to the minus two meters. For the electric field, we'll have K sub E multiplied by the magnitude of the charge and then divided by that same distance squared. Now what's really nice here, if you go back to the picture, is that the electric fields are pointing in the exact same direction. It's not as if one is pointing one way and the other is pointing in another way. If it were that way, we'd have to start worrying about X and Y components. But here they point in the same direction. So this means that the net electric field magnitude is simply the magnitude of the electric field provided by Q2 plus the magnitude of the electric field provided by Q4. And we've already come up with those expressions. We have the electric field for Q2 right here and that for Q4 right there. So let's fill them in. And so now it's just a matter of filling in the known values. So for Ke, you probably were taught that it's 8.99 times 10 to the power of nine. That's gonna be Newton meters over Coulomb squared. Multiply that by the magnitude of charge Q2. Now Q2 was negative, but because it's in the absolute value symbol, we'll keep it positive. And you might remember from the question that it was 3.2 nanocoulombs. So because it's nanocoulombs, you have to do 3.2 times 10 to the negative nine coulombs, like so. And then divide this by that distance squared. And then over here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna have the 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. We'll omit the unit here because I'm running out of room. For Q4, it's the same magnitude. All four charges have the same magnitude. And then we're gonna divide that by that same distance squared. So now the moment of truth, pick up your calculator and type this in very carefully. And when you do that, you should get about 287680 newtons per coulomb. And if you wanna get that in scientific notation. Let's see, your decimal point is right here. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's gonna be 2.88 times 10 to the power of five Newtons per Coulomb. That is the correct answer for the magnitude of the net electric field at the center of the square. By the way, a little calculator trick, you might, noticed, you might have noticed that these two were exactly the same. So you actually could have just taken the first one, put it in your calculator and then multiplied it by two. That would have been a little bit easier, but regardless, here is the final answer.